Welcome to the Inclusive Plug powered by Reconomy. I'm Sabin, your host. Uh, in this episode, we are joined by a distinguished panel to discuss the vision of a Western Balkan where the challenges posed by the small size of individual Western Balkan countries transform into opportunities for robust economic growth through the sectors of business process outsourcing and ICT. Our guests include two representatives of the Association of Business Service uh, leaders, or ABSL in short, Nadina Gradashevich, who is Managing Director and Vice President of ABSL Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Ariudita Mustali, the President of ABSL Albania. I'm joined by my colleague Eni Kosilari, representing Helvetas in the frame of Reconomy. Nadina, Ariudita, and Eni, welcome to the online studio of Reconomy. Ine, I'd like to start uh, with you. Uh, can you give uh, an overview for our audience uh, of the current land economic landscape in the Western Balkans, particularly focusing on the challenges faced by the BPO sector? Um, first of all, I would like to thank you, Sabin, for having me. Um, this topic is very close to our hearts of economy. Um, and well, as for the economic landscape, uh, in the recent years, the Western Balkans has seen moderate economic growth, but of course it has been uneven across countries facing continuous challenges. Unemployment rate, on the other hand, also remains high, especially among youth, uh, leading to significant migration, but also to brain drain as well. Um, foreign direct investment, on the other hand, has also been es essential for growth in the region. But attracting it and also retaining it has been tough due to several reasons, being political, infrastructural, but also social sometimes. And now talking about the business process outsourcing itself. So the BPO sector specifically has emerged as a promising uh, industry in the Western Balkans, offering different services, be it customer support, IT outsourcing, back office operation, etc and getting specifically to the challenges that the BPO sector is currently facing in the Balkans. First of all, I would like to start with the increasing level of required worker skill set. And what do I mean by that is uh, that international companies are demanding a certain level or a higher level of skills for both BPO managers, but also for line employees as well. Second is definitely fragmentation. BPO firms in the region are currently too small to compete effectively. Uh, they have limited capacities in terms of operations. And we also, uh, here we're talking about also limited workforce, facing, on the other hand, stiff competition from global outsourcing destinations, such as India, Philippines, but also competition within the Europe region as well, especially in the Eastern Europe. And here we're talking about countries like Poland and Romania. And third, lastly, but of course not the least, uh, entry barriers, business enabling environment, cost effectiveness as well is a challenge that is currently faced by the BPO sector, especially in our region. Since we're part of the EU integration process, being part of such process may reduce cost competitiveness in the longer term, requiring the regions of so the Western Balkan regions to find other ways to basically differentiate itself in such a sector. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Annie, for providing this overview. Now, Nadina, you've been pivotal in uh, advocating for the BPO and IT sectors in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Can you share some of the successful practices that have made, or I mean, have been implemented since its establishment in 2019? Yes, sure. Uh, thanks again for the invitation. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here today and uh, to speak with you on behalf of the Association of Business Service Leaders in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So since its establishment in 2019, the ABSL has been an accelerator for the industry's growth and a significant force in attracting investors, retaining qualified workforce in Bosnia and Herzegovina and promoting Bosnia and Herzegovina as an appealing near shore destination for global business services. Together with our member companies, partners and relevant decision makers, we actively contribute to the economic growth 
and the employment of young people by offering them opportunities for professional development in their country. So let me just share with you some examples of how we accomplish that. So since, since the association was founded, we have released four ABSL country reports. This is the most important publication for investors and members of the business community. These reports assess the local market's capacities, companies' competences, and the range of services offered within the sector. So showing basically the advantages and potentials of our market as a high quality location for global business services. And this was the only publication on the business services sector in Bosnia and Herzegovina that was officially presented at the Expo 2020 in Dubai. So now our next release, the fifth ABSL country report for Bosnia and Herzegovina on business services sector and services and the range of services offered within the sector will be uh, in next release will be November this year. Another successful initiative uh, in our portfolio is our annual ABSL conferences. Uh, so far, we have successfully organized three ABSL conferences in Bosnia and Herzegovina and additional 25 knowledge sharing events. So at ABSL, uh, we bring together local and international experts promoting excellence through continuous development and exchange of knowledge and experience we collaborate with international associations, investors, companies, diplomatic representatives to position the country and the Western Balkans as an attractive business destination. So these events, including our ABSL clubs hosted by our member companies, uh, have these events have attracted over 1,800 online participants and more than 500 participants at on-site events. Next conference, and I would like to invite you as well, is the fourth ABSL conference uh, will be will take place on May 23rd in Sarajevo uh, under the topic, uh, under the name Transforming Tomorrow. And this will be a great chance again uh, to discuss sector trends. It will be opportunity for business development and the opportunity to explore local and regional market potentials. So, uh, one another initiative that we are very proud of is uh, the launch of the International ABSL Women Together. That was the initi initiative that we have went, launched last year at the conference uh, mm -hmm. with the overall goal to foster an inclusive and empowered global business services sector by promoting gender equality, advancing female leadership and creating a supportive network for women in this sector. And we truly believe, so we started that with our colleagues from ABSL Poland uh, on, on international through other ABSL country chapters. Uh, Hungary just started their own ABSL Women Together initiative as well. And we believe that networking opportunities and the recognition of female leaders will help create fair and equal chances and reduce the gender pay gap as well. So uh, I would be happy to provide more examples of successful incentives. Uh, we have implemented also with public sector and educational sector in our further discussion then. Thank, thank you very much, Nadina. And I'll definitely come back on the regional uh, value addition. Ariodita, uh, ABSL Albania started as the Albanian Business Services Association in 2018 and later joined the ABSL network in 2020. How has this transition and international affiliation influenced your operations and goals in Albania? Um, first, thank you for the invitation and, and giving us this uh, opportunity to talk more about uh, this topic that uh, now every day is becoming much more, let's say, hot topic for uh, the employment and um, let's say, for the growth of the economy of our country. At the beginning, it was like everything very hard, like uh, a, a, new, um, a new idea of doing business. And uh, when we started, it was like huge responsibility to trust in this process. So we were a little group of businesses. Then um, 
by believing and by really uh, investing uh, all our effort and uh, uh, providing numbers of employees. I remember that in that moment, uh, the employees working in the um, uh, in the area in, in the in the sector was around 30, uh, 30,000, 32,000 employees. Mm -hmm. But for the government was something very uh, new. So our government was not recognizing the potential of the country, of the of the sector, uh, for the country, and it was like uh, our our talks or our uh, uh, our struggles were like uh, first of all trying to, to to convince that we are important, but um, we had let's say big helps from Helvetas like RC Albania in that in that time that believed in us and believed in the sector. So we started together a project by promoting and talking um, uh, with the government, um, like, like uh, telling more about the sector, telling more about uh, the, the, the benefits that this sector can bring, especially in the, uh, in the workforce and in, uh, in the training of the workforce, but also in, a, 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 in the employment uh, rate. And this mm -hmm. brought us to the possibility to participate also in um, uh, business fairs, like international business fairs. This was one of, of the our requests uh, in the in the project. That um, why? Because this sector gave us the possibility to bring business in. So it was like the difference between our uh, type of uh, uh, work. Um, in comparison of the other industries developed in the country was that we were exporting services. So this was uh, one of the, uh, let's say, um, biggest challenges, but also one of the biggest power that we had in that moment. So what we right. said is like, we need to participate. And in that moment we participated, I remember in an event in Prague, where we met also IBSL uh, uh, Poland uh, in, that, in that event. So we presented our numbers, we presented our uh, possibilities, and then we became, uh, um, we decided uh, to be uh, with both together. We decided to, uh, to have Albania in the, in the map. In that moment was like a huge like a result for us because from that moment we became, we, we 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 made a big move and it was like pandemic uh, uh, mm -hmm. two, two three months later it was like uh, uh, pandemic when we uh, decided but we still didn't stop mm -hmm. the results uh, I don't want in our case i don't like to do let's say let's call it marketing for for for, for the results because what we are proud of is that uh, we put albania in the map of the bpo uh, in the world so uh, it, with the help of uh, of or, or let's say with this move with the step of becoming uh, a bsl international or part of a bsl international it was like uh, it, it it boosts our reputation not only uh, in uh, in the Balkans, but more uh, moreover, and this was the first. Second, it was like much more easy for us uh, for the uh, communication with the government. Like uh, it was something much more. Um, it strengthened our 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 voice because right. we didn't had only our numbers, but also the numbers of international uh, ABSL. Like uh, we could provide examples, and for our government, like uh, it was like a must for them to understand that there are uh, other uh, big companies uh, in the in the Eastern Europe and in the Balkans that have the same situation, like like uh, like us. We were able to provide uh, much more business for our companies, like much more connection with uh, not only. Um, near uh near shore but also uh much in the other uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 countries so this this was like small uh let's say i call it small achievement or, or small let's say uh, achievements but with big impacts in the uh in the economy because the number of the businesses uh, uh in the sector was not growing was like fortifying their results what we right. were bringing in the table was like a, a specific um, like um, 
examples or uh, um, successful stories uh, for our businesses to show uh, and to, to become much more um, active and much more um, like, um, how to say, um, much more near of the, let's say, business model that our uh, international uh, partners have. Yeah. So, this so, was, yeah. yeah. so Aridita, your mission includes facilitating foreign investments in Albania, right? Yeah. So can you share a few success stories that you just mentioned that you have had on attracting foreign investments to the country's business services sector? Yeah, it was one of the main topics, in fact, uh, to talk with the government and to bring uh, investments. I um, can show uh, one of them. We had also Wipro in Albania, but they didn't uh, went uh, further. Uh, we, you know, Wipro, it's one of the biggest BPO in, uh, in the world. Then uh, we invited different um, investors that they uh, made some, let's say, small investment in the country. But one of the biggest was Fusion BPO, and it is still. Fusion BPO, it's one of the eight um, BPOs in the in the world, eight biggest uh, BPO um, yeah. company. They, uh, with them, was very interesting um, relationship because we invited them in, uh, in Albania and we hosted them in one of the businesses uh, that we have uh, members in the, in the association. So they hosted them. Uh, we invited them to uh, collaborate their team with the team uh, of our with teams of our members. So they facilitated the integration uh, or the entrance of the uh, Fusion BPO in the uh, in Albania because it was not easy for them. So they didn't know how it was uh, working in the um, uh, in this small, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. country. So they hosted. They had the Fusion BPO in their offices for more than four months, and then Fusion BPO uh, opened their uh, their business. Then, um, because during the last years, Albania it's working a lot in startups also and in e-commerce. I want to mention that one of the biggest moves were like uh, bringing in Albania and becoming um, an integrational part of uh, Keretsu Forum, that it's an it's a, like association that brings investment for startups. Like, I know that maybe it's not direct, but uh, our startups, and we invested a lot on them, um, and in e-commerce also, it's helping a lot of the young generation on um, trainings, on innovation, and on finding solutions for the existing uh, BPO businesses in the country. So yeah. it was like uh, this, uh, this, this two example I can mention now, but it's just... Yeah, thank you very much, Aryudita, for, for this. Uh, Nadina, back to you. The establishment of the ABSL Western Balkans is seen as a significant step towards regional collaboration. What motivated this initiative? Well, uh, as you know, economic integration is a major driver of growth of jobs and prosperity. So I believe it's, it's especially important for smaller economies like those in the Western Balkans, just as we spoke at the beginning, uh, our countries are, as, and markets are relatively small. So I strongly believe that the business services sector emerging as the fastest growing sector in Bosnia and also in the region can facilitate this economic integration. This sector can contribute to the advancement of the Western Balkan countries and generate economic growth across the region by bringing new technologies, fostering the exchange of innovative ideas, improving employment opportunities. It can also support the transition to sustainable, environmentally friendly and resilient development. But besides that, I would say that was the primary motivation. But besides that, our member companies uh, in Bosnia and also who are uh, operating across, which are comp operating across the Western Balkans, have recognized the benefits of having the association of being part 
of the association representing the sector and its needs. Uh, and that, that this kind of associations truly can influence the social and socioeconomic development and growth while serving as the voice of the business services sector. So they also, it, the impulse came also from our member companies uh, to move forward, to establish new markets, to go to another markets and to establish ABSL Western Balkan. Yeah, thank you very much, Nadina. And how do you envision ABSL Western Balkans addressing the fragmentation and scale issues in, in the market? Oh, this is a really good question. Uh, and yeah, a really great question. And we will put a lot of focus on that. Uh, as, as you know, that as markets evolve, businesses have to adapt their strategies to address the challenges and opportunities brought by market fragmentation. So uh, together with our colleagues from other ABSL country chapters, together also with our colleagues from ABSL Albania, uh, we plan to provide a platform to discuss and address all challenges and opportunities for the members of the ABSL Western Balkans to provide a platform, to create a platform for collaboration, for partnerships, to foster this collaboration among companies within the sector, to share best practices, to achieve these economies of scale. And we also plan to advocate for legal reforms to facilitate cross-border market integration. Uh, it is going to be much easier uh, to advocate these changes as a single point of contact uh, than when we have six, seven different uh, there is just another form of influence there. So uh, we will also work towards positioning and promoting the whole region as an attractive nearshore, as an attractive nearshore opportunity. So I believe this is the uh, that that this region, that the Western Balkan region, and also companies, especially local companies, who are uh, in business involved in business services, global business services, can succeed only if they really learn to collaborate together. Uh, and uh, GBS sector is growing, is bringing agile business models, is driving digital transformation, providing new technologies, creating really new career prospects. Uh, so mm -hmm. this sector, I believe, brings really great opportunities for the development and economic growth across the region of the Western Balkans. Thank you, Nadine. Back to you, Annie. Uh, can you tell the audience out there what led Reconomy to focus specifically on this sector and what opportunities do you see in, it, in its uh, regionalization? Well, Sabine, as you already know, Reconomy was launched amid the pandemic. And of course, it was somehow driven by a pre-existing digital momentum. And as a green, um, regional um, and inclusive economic development program, backing this sector specifically aligns perfectly with our goals and what do i mean by that is that firstly it creates economic opportunities especially for younger generation it also on the other hand attracts um, investments in this case foreign direct investments as well it does improve living conditions specifically by boosting job creations but also additional income or more distant income for younger generation but not only all while fostering a more skilled and also competitive workforce. Additionally, by promoting regionalization through this particular initiative that also Nadina mentioned, and through a common market approach, we do enhance the region's competitiveness and seeing the region as one. And um, last but not least, within our broader digitalization efforts, where also this project fits in, um, facilitating technology transfers that actually comes from the BPO sector to other industries is also another key aspect that we are ensuring to definitely work on. And as for the opportunities that come with regionalization, one thing is for sure that there is no more of a single market approach. And opportunities-wise, regionalization definitely enables um, BPO companies to join forces to pooling those joint resources, also um, uh, workforce-wise, to access a larger market base, including regional clients, but also regional and international markets. 
Secondly, BPO companies in uh, different countries within the Western Balkans, they do collaborate, they do share best practices, resources, market insights, fostering, um, let's say, a supportive ecosystem for, for the industry. And thirdly, definitely it's integration that we as a project, but not only us, um, efforts are being made to harmonize policies, laws, regulations, standards, and infrastructure across the region to facilitate seamless operations and reduce barriers, especially for uh, BPO companies' entries into the market. Thank, thank you, Annie. And uh, workforce development is crucial, right, in the BPO sector. What interventions does Reconomy have in place to ensure a skilled workforce is ready to meet the demands of the BPO sector? Um, firstly, I would like to start and emphasize what Nadina also mentioned. Reconomy has recently initiated a new regional intervention that is aimed at establishing association of business service leaders, ABSLs in this case, across all Western Balkan countries, including also the creation of a unified Western Balkans ABSL where none currently exists. This initiative actually involves a range of different activities, such as expanding different business models across different private sector companies in each of the countries that we're operating, uh, providing capacity building training programs for um, ecosystem players, enhancing advocacy platforms, implementing employment training programs, uh, awareness activities, and of course, with the key aim on promoting the BPO sector on a national, regional, but also on an international level. In parallel to that, addressing the challenges that I previously mentioned, the shortage of skilled workers remains definitely a, uh, let's say, a significant obstacle and a top priority for us at Reconomy. In response, us as Reconomy are implementing a skills-focused intervention across all six Western Balkan countries. And this includes actions to adjust to new curriculas and modules for uh, trainings and, more, and supporting non-formal training providers with uh, trainings related to the industry itself, like the BPO industry itself, standardize and also regionalize non-formal training curriculas on digital soft and hard skills as well. Mm -hmm. Efforts to promote freelancing, on the other hand, and entrepreneurship as viable career paths and so on and so forth, but I would like to stop with these that I already mentioned. Thank you, Annie. And collaboration with educational institutions and government bodies is crucial for sectoral growth. Nadina, can you discuss your approach to fostering these relationships and the impact they have on the industry's development? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. But uh, first, I would really like to, to say that we are very honored to have helped us and Reconomy uh, as a partners uh, who have recognized the importance of the business services sector for the economic growth of the Western Balkans. Uh, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to our partnership and, and collaboration on this project. So regarding the, the educational and the public sector, many member companies, uh, if not all of them, have some kind of uh, internal academies, and they all cooperate mm -hmm. with different universities in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we have decided uh, to create a unique platform for discussion between our member companies, so between private sector and the universities, educational sector, where uh, we will all have the opportunity to exchange opinions and experience and to actively participate in the developing the skills, in developing the skills of young talents who are future potential employees in the business services sector. So as a part of this incentive, we have our member companies and seven universities so far working together on issues such as mentorship, uh, internship, skills development, and collabor different collaborations. Uh, we organize GBS career days at the universities, and we have as well uh, guest lectures with our member companies at the universities. This is all, uh, we just started with that, year and a half ago, and the aim is to kind of demonstrate to show that there are chances for career development and promising career prospects within this sector and in the country, so to create sustainable opportunities in order to address the challenges of talent shortage, of this gap between supply and demand, 
uh, challenges of brain drain and uh, of skills that are truly needed uh, on the market, skills development, and to, to reduce mm -hmm. the gap between the, the skills supply and demand. So this Thanks, is what we do with, with universities. Uh, we can talk later on with uh, about the incentives uh, that we have with the public sector, if you wish. And, and education and skills development are essential uh, for the growth of the BPO sector. Uh, Aryudita, how are you working with educational institutions to improve relevant programs and prepare the workforce for the demands of uh, this sector? From the, from the beginning of um, our experience in the association, uh, we had, let's say, two, um, two main uh, targets. First, to uh, promote more of the vet, let's call it vet education or uh, vocational trainings. Why? Because we had the experience of the biggest, uh, uh, biggest companies in the country, uh, in the BPO sector, that uh, this, uh, this was working and very good. So we were doing trainings to uh, youngest, uh, to young generation, to, um, to create on them skills that are uh, good for providing uh, good services uh, to, to, the, uh, to the customers. But the most important was like uh, then promoting the, the potential of the industry to uh, the traditional educational um, uh, universities like uh, mm -hmm. schools. And uh, this was at, at the beginning hard because uh, it is like um, a mismatch that, that like uh, they didn't recognize what does it mean or what was the difference between like providing normal services. But mm -hmm. then slowly, slowly uh, we achieved like this um, uh, target uh, on working with the biggest university that we have in the country, like in different cities, because not every city has, let's say at the beginning, Tirana was the main focus, but then uh, slowly, slowly we understood that it was not uh, only the capital, uh, the, the let's say the biggest uh, city uh, that we have to promote. Uh, for the BPO sector, uh, dif differentiate uh, this with other industries, uh, the other cities like our potential, like Shkodra, Duras, Vlora, uh, Elbasan, uh, Korcha or other uh, cities and the difference is that every city has his potential. Like not uh, mm -hmm. each, not every city has one potential. Maybe Škodra is more for sales or telecommunication, and Korcha is more for digital marketing. So we were talking about this, and then you, the, for the universities was very very um, a big like um, big opportunity. They they found it as an opportunity. So from that moment we work now. We have collaboration with. Uh, all the universities in the country, like Moisiu, like Luis Guracucci, like just for you to mention, just for for for, for mention mentioning them, uh, even private and even uh, uh, public universities. Uh, but most important now, we uh, with with another um, Swiss uh, project, we are uh, we started to work for vet education system, so to provide and to help. Um, uh, vet educational uh, schools mm -hmm. to change or to integrate their curricula to, 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 let's say, to, uh, to do like uh, more, uh, to come much more near the needs of the uh, BPO businesses. And this is working very, uh, it's working in uh, very good. Like this is facilitating more and uh, more we facilitate, more we bring uh, the schools near uh, the needs of the businesses and more we see that uh, businesses feel like uh, evaluated right. because at the beginning mm -hmm. was like very hard to convince uh, the businesses to come uh, and talk about their problems now we see that every day it becomes much more easy because they feel and they see the results so for us as association uh, it becomes uh, much more easy and our teams becomes much more easy uh, to talk and to integrate because they see that the right. stakeholders are much more interested. 
Yeah, thanks, uh, Ariadita. Addressing the skill gap is vital for uh, industry sustainability. Now back to you, Nadina. Can you talk about the initiatives you have in place to ensure the local workforce is equipped with the necessary skills and competencies? Sure. I have already mentioned our project Meetup with Universities and GBS Career Days uh, and the incentives to co connecting public and educational and private sector. But we, uh, I also have uh, shortly mentioned the ABSL clubs which we have as our share as a knowledge sharing platform. We have ABSL IT club, ABSL HR club, ABSL business finance club. Besides that, we have many great experts in this sector, in this field, living and working growth, who support our community through knowledge transfer and networking opportunities, bringing knowledge, experience, and business opportunities to Bosnian market and to local companies. So we kind of combine, it's a combination between uh, providing the platform for private, for our company members, for private sector and educational sector to find sustainable solutions to bridge the gap between demand and supply, working on improvement of the whole socioeconomic framework, as, which should be fun, uh, as a fundamental basis for skills upskilling and also involving our experts living abroad to share their expertise and knowledge uh, to contribute to the, to the skills development in this sector in the country. In addition, we have also, uh, besides that, we, we through our work uh, and with the public sector, we have influenced or we have advocated for certain incentives that will help and support uh, educational system. So, as a, as we have been working closely with the public sector almost from the begin from the very beginning of the association, and as as a member of the working group and advisory council of the Sarajevo Canton government, uh, we have been working to raise awareness of the importance of this sector, but also uh, as we have been advocating initiatives to improve business environment for the member companies for the sector as a whole, and this included. Uh, the incentives for employment at, and upskilling within the BPO and the ITO sectors. Uh, this also, uh, we, ha we have been advocating for increased quotas at IT majors at state universities and also pushing for better regulations regarding student work. Uh, in addition, we also strive to position our member companies and this sector as key partners in dual education efforts uh, in, in the country. Ariudita, Nadina, and Eni, thank you very much for uh, your insights. Uh, this episode of Inclusive Plug Powered by Reconomy reminds me that through collaborative efforts in the sectors of business process outsourcing and ICT, we can see the creation of a vibrant ecosystem that attracts and retains skilled youth, making the Western Balkan region a regional hub for global business services. Let's get back to work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine.